Good evening, welcome to tonight's Hearthstone Half Hour. I'm Hammy, this is Falkoff Cast. Hope you are well. As you can see by well, this very impressive looking Draenei himself. Uh, we're going to be continuing a Shaman Arena um, after all of the excitement and shenanigans of the last couple of weeks of next year. So we're getting back to our usual schedule and we're going to be jumping on in to none other than our Shaman Arena. It's a Shaman Arena you folks picked and we are going to be continuing it. So we will just have a quick look and review as we jump and go and have a look. What you guys went for as a deck was kind of a reasonable mana curve that was generally we sort of kind of called it tempo just for the fact that there was no real massive mana distribution anyway but if you look into it you actually guys picked quite a nice few cards and um, we had Earthshock, we had various control in the early game we could swing in with some early minions and ancestral spirit for rebuffing our minions as well getting them to come back from the dead always good fun we were then jumping in with various things like wind fury we had some science with the craze alchemist throwing down hexes as well two of those for control which was very nice uh, the emperor cobra um, for trading away Brewmaster for some flipping and we generally had strong minions and spells all over but the general idea uh, was to keep control with minions in the early mid game, cement control in the mid game, really have control of the board by training and then swing away with some of these 2-4 minions and big minions in the late game. So we all won one. Let's finish up this run and uh, let's get on into our first match. Shaman, of course, a bit of a funny one in the old arena world. Um, does not always thrive as much as it could, but it can have some very powerful kit if you can draft a lot of small minions. If you can grab those bloodlusts, and of course grab those totems and similar. It still can be very awkward to get rid of. And we have none other than a paladin. We're expecting small minions. We could be expecting his um, summoning hero ability, e.g. lots of tokens. And what do we have? Well, we've got a tank that's not bad. That can sort of soak up a bit of aggro with that. I'm going to mulligan, keep the lightning bolt for control, and then see if there's anything that we can tidy up after. An Earthshock and a Chillwind Yeti. There are a lot worse starting hands that we could have. And we've drawn into a Sunwalker. Nothing we can do there, but I'll tap on the table and pass. And second turn, as always, as a Shaman, I'll look to throw down a Totem, because I've not got much else going on there. A Wargun can certainly tap us for two damage next go. Unless we get something else. Black Knight in hand. This is a stone claw taunting totem. Nope. Maybe I'll go for the totem. Maybe he'll just decide to go straight for my face. Two damage to my face. My poor shaman face. In comes the coin for a three mana drop. And there goes the acolyte. So of course he will get some draw power if that gets hit. And he goes for the trade. His organ decides to come out of hiding. Very well. Well, um, I'm not going to Earth Shock and Lightning Bolts. Um, I could really Earth Shock that uh, to silence the draw power. Um, might be a clever option. I'm going to Totem, and this is probably going to be. Oh, I knew it. So that forced me to make a decision. Do I Earth Shock and get rid of that? Or do I get the Walk? Well, I'm going to Earth Shock. Um, reason for that being, I just want to get rid of him drawing cards with that card. Set up some trades. Oh, he's decided to buff it up to make it an attacking minion of all things. And he's going to keep the flow going. Okay, so I can throw down a chill wind, or I can look to get some table control. I can keep that going. The voodoo doctor can restore a couple of health. I can throw down a totem. And what do we get there? A healing totem, that's lovely. And then with my lightning bolt, I'm going to take probably, I think, the most threatening minion in the form of. Shad Sun Cleric. Now that does overload me of course by one, but I will be able to keep going and putting some more pressure on, so that's not a problem. And see so as we come into turn five, I could have got the Silver Hand Knight out if I hadn't overloaded. Interesting. And in an arena nonetheless, the Stone Skin Gargoyle, so that's one of the new Nux Remus cards. If I don't kill that in one go, it will heal itself back. And with the Blessing of Wisdom, whenever it attacks, it draws a card, meaning that he's going to be drawing a lot of cards with that. Um, unless I can do something about it. Now the Chilwind Yeti will certainly do something about it, so for that reason, down goes Chilwind Yeti. He's not going to be able to trade with that. He's going to be able to draw one card if he attacks with it, and if I kill it, then that will be good. Of course, the Shaman may... Uh, uh, Paladin friend may well have some control cards in his hand. But no, the Golem pretty much rules out unless he uses a Blessing of Might. Anything else? Gets one card draw and goes for the attack. Drops the secrets. Could be that nasty new paladin secret. Just chipping away at me there. Trying to do a few more damage. 
Okay, so what I can now do here is really cement my presence on the table. Like a black hand knight, I'm going to go for a sunwalker, and then I'm going to see if I can. Oh, repentance, health reduced to one, but it still has its bubble. So at least that's going to get a two for one trade in of some description. You can be sorry, but I'm going to destroy your thing that was drawing cards. So I'm not too sorry that he's sorry. He can remove that. That's fine. We'll be will be a bit annoying, but um, yeah. If he trades both for it, I'm happy because that gives me a bit of table control. Drops his own Sunwalker, which is a bit more awkward. But um, this is where the legend that we've picked. Oh, <laughs> he's not going to be expecting that one. And I'm just going to uh, return his sorry. <laughs> oh, sad. Oh, if he's going to say he's sorry to me, he, he gets one sorry back from me to him. <laughs> I don't want to be uh, indulging in the world of bad manners. Nightblade comes down, I can try that away with my Black Knight, feeling good, no weapon to be removed with the Acidic Swampoos. I can even control that with my Totem if I so desire. And then throwing down, oh, okay. Well, throwing down another Sunwalker will certainly be very awkward. There we go. Um, I could then tap for a Totem, or I could um, buff up various attacks with this and I think that would be quite nice, let's buff up the attacks what I'm going to do is re remove the black knights and although we are very vulnerable to uh, a consecrate or something from our enemy paladin we're not too bad at this point in time So the Shaman deck that we've got, even though we described it as tempo, it looked a little itty bitty with some of its cards. The sheer strength of minions that we had throughout the deck always mean that we can be throwing down a threat every turn, and we're not particularly weak in the early game, which, uh, again, is a risk with some arena decks, given that a lot of arena decks seem to come out quite early. Benchico Mercenary, thrown down as a threat, but his minions now cost three more. Oh, and a Mulligan! Just a surrender. Win one. Onwards. I have time for another couple of games, so I'm just going to keep this ball rolling. So there we saw how, even though our deck is looking a little bit disparate, basically, because we've got a combinations of minions that go with each other and a reasonably steady flow of minions throughout our mana curve um, what could be a tough situation actually is not too bad second turn this time all two high drops Ooh, we've got an opponent with a warrior I'm going to mulligan for the whole lot and try and get some better early game drops I think that'll be the way forward Malatide, Earthshock, Abomination, Cobra, and that is fine. I'm quite happy with that. I can coin into something turn three if there's nothing else going on. Uh, turn two if there's nothing else going on. Or I can just throw down a totem if everything's safe. And with a Paz Dingo, I can absolutely, um, even turn three if I can hang on for a bit longer, get a really nice early control on that board. And a Murloc Warrior, interesting. Well, I'm going to be charging in, causing me some props. But the good thing is, I have recipes for that. Abomination will certainly deal with that. Um, I could earth shock it, but I could save the earth shock. Um, or I could coin into a cobra or something similar. I'm just going to go for a straight up removal. A little bit of a waste of the silence of an earth shock. If you drop something nasty that I could have silenced, I will regret that. But <laughs> for the time being, there we go. Frothing Berserker again. All expected so far. Wind Fury, I can Mana Tide or I can coin into a Taz Dingo. Now, coining into the Taz Dingo um, will almost uh, Emperor Cobra. He could try and trade off. I'm guessing he probably won't. Um, if he decides not to kill it, next turn I can drop my Taz Dingo. And that'll all be well and good. Okay, I'll certainly use that on the Skillwind Yeti. And he's decided to roll straight past me. I was expecting this. Okay, oh, the temptation to play a Wind Fury. Um, I can actually coin into a, another minion, a, another one as well. But um, the, the Sengen could come down, but what I can actually do is <laughs> a neat little play. 
So a wind furied Emperor Cobra. I can attach that. That will destroy it because of the uh, Cobra's effect. Welcome back, lords. And then a wind furied Cobra can take out two minions in one go. And you can see I've actually traded seven mana's worth of minions for... Ooh, okay, it was about five in the end. That was a nice little trade. There we go, a Spiteful Smith. Very good if he has a weapon. And of course, Warriors, that card goes oh so well with them. Okay, well, I can certainly hex, hex that up. Just remove that threat strain on up the table. And you know what, I think now is the time to uh, start getting a little bit ahead. So I'm going to throw down the mana tide with my coin, and that is going to let me start drawing. He's going to need to remove my tank and then do some damage to that. Certainly possible with whirlwinds, executes, slams, all of the warrior's usual control kit. But we don't know what he's got because this is arena. So I'm going to take that risk. And he's just gone straight for a boulder fist, um, which will be nasty, certainly. But I can keep putting up tanks, so it's really going to slow that business down. Okay, options. I can sort of throw down a small tank. I'll throw down a good bashy for some damage. Throw down a Sinjin. I'm just going to go straight for the Sunwalker. Um, he's going to have to try dealing with that. And oh, there we go. I get my Black Knight in hand. And the longer that your mana tide stays on the table as a Shaman, the more value you're getting for that mana. Just a straight up smash in the face from the Boulder Fist. Down comes the Mad Bomber. Most likely going to remove my bubble. There we go. And there goes a Dark Iron Dwarf. Oh, it actually means he's going to be able to yep, damage my tank, but not remove it. So my Sunwalker is doing its job. Okay, so... Um, bum, 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 the Black Knight, Torin Warrior, Gurubashi Berserker, Rockbiter, Senjin. Okay, so we got some bigger nasty threats on the table. And sadly, none of these are tanks, so I need to think about how we could remove some of these. Dropping a rock biter would certainly let me remove that, but it gets rid of my tank. If I throw down a Taz Dingo, that will certainly solidify things up a bit. Um, an Abomination would sort of certainly start clearing his board. I cannot tank up the Oasis Snapdrill. So, for that reason, I think I'm actually going to go for a Senjin, and then I'm going to go into a Tournament Warrior. Um, okay, we will not give you any spoilers as you have requested. All of these things would kill me. I'm going to tap the warrior for some health. I'm with three tanks up. So, we've managed to get... Although he's got dangerous minions down, we've actually managed to put out three pretty nice tanking minion. So we're going to be in a good position. Down goes a taskmaster. That can certainly remove one of mine. There we go. And his two remaining minions... That's Chew and Yeti as well. He's really getting some good, solid, chunky minions. Hey, welcome Zano. It is good to have you with us, sir. Uh, been a while and I hope you are well. And there we go, all the trades are coming out. My tank wall has been decimated, eviscerated, and all of those kind of ateds. Okay, well, here we have a nice little option. I can throw out the Abomination. And I can throw a hex. Yeah. There we go. If he wants to come and get me, he's going to have to take out half his own minions. <laughs> and although he, I will take out my own Manatide Totem as well, that Manatide Totem has been excellent value. He has managed to uh, give me a whole bunch of card draw. For that reason, I'm, I'm happy and pleased. Oh, he's thrown down one of his own tanks. However, little does he know that I have the Black uh, Knight of Wind. In waiting. Okay, well, I think there's pretty obvious play to be dropped here. I can just Black Knight that way, which is a lovely option. Um, oh, I could even return my Black Knight if I was feeling particularly nasty. Uh, but Black Knighting, of course, means that it does lower me a few options in terms of what I can do. But either way, the Black Knight is just a nice removal piece. And I can actually rock bite her. Um, and then I can voodoo doctor heal myself up. And then I can just take a blow. I don't really want to take the blow to my face. A little bit risky, but removing that minion on my terms means that at least I can keep my black knight alive another go. There goes the Scarlet Crusader. For those of you who are having trouble getting into Nax, um, Hey, I mean, if you avoid spoilers, you're just going to be having a huge bunch of fun. Uh, 
annoying commanding shouts. I am to keep putting the pressure on and he still has his battle axe as well. So I need to be doing some trades, doing some deals. Now I do not have tanks which is a bit annoying. He's going to smack me in the face with a big bunch of those. What I can however do is Silver Hand Knights. Oh, chuck a few of those down. Um, anyway so Snapjaw is just going to help me trade stuff or anything else. I don't want to be brewmastering anything. Um, unless I charge into something with the this is a little move that's not awful. I can save that. So I've got a good little free kill there. One overload. At least I've managed to remove that off the deck. So just a you know, a little bit not the most mana inefficient thing, but it means I certainly I can bust another tank. And oh, that was a perfect play because I can bust one of his tanks off the deck um, by <laughs> pandering and flipping my knight, I've actually managed to get that additional option, which is great. And he knows I've got the black knight in my hand again. So he knows what is coming. That is the bottom line because Hammy says so. Love that. Loving that. The ooze is not going to live for long. I can tank it up and with my silver hand. And this deck of yours is a real nice. This may even confession be from a couple of weeks back. I can't remember. What was this last week? I need to go and look back at the episodes and see where we got to. But you can see that we've just pushed through with this mana curve. Ah, oh, we have science. We have weird and crazy science. But we're not going to use the science yet. Not just yet. Okay, well, I could give him the pleasure of card draw, or I could just charge into the opponent's face. I'm going to charge into the opponent's face. We have a full table. If he decides to brawl, um, then we could be in a bit of trouble. He's gone for the card draw. Is that going to help him? Down goes a fairy dragon. Down goes an ardent squire. We got one armor. Oh, we're, th no, we're about four off lethal now. Oh, a bit of science. A bit of science incoming. Zano would be proud. Look at this science. Science for the match. Oh, scientific endeavors. Our Oasis Snapture is now 7 2. Loving that. Scientific Snapdrill. I'm loving that science. For science! Great science! Crazed Alchemist plus Oasis. Snapjaw equals scientific. Snapjaw. For science. Lethal. <laughs> For science! That was great science. It was good science. Let's play one more. <laughs> and good. We're 3 1. I'm loving it. Maybe this could be some kind of crazy mad. Pick your own arena record. Oh, we've got a priest. You know what priests mean. They could be crazy ooze of it. Let us see what this uh, traitorous priest. Who will rid me of this cursed priest? Mind vision. Oh, he's already starting the uh, scientific endeavors. He's, whatever he's nicked there is probably nasty. You could have a sunwalker, a boulder for a rock biter, or a hex. I don't like any of them. <laughs> My opponent has got one of those. What's he going to play? Oh, a youthful brewmaster. So he still don't know what he's picked. 
but I've got an ancestral spirit, so that means that I do have maximum capacity to be annoying my opponent. Let's get him under control straight up. Let's go for it. Go for it. Fairy Dragon goes down. Cannot be targeted by spells or hero powers. Brightwing. I just think of Brightwing from Heroes of the Storm all the time now. Evil. 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 Okay, well, I don't want to Ancestral Spirit, any of that. Um, I had fun flipping things last time, but you know what? I'm going to flip my Totem. Oh. Just to be so I can get my Brewmaster down. <laughs> I won Mana Healing Totem. I'm sure that could come in useful in some situation. Not. We're going to see a hex. What's he going to drop for five mana? Oh, go bashy. Okay. Hey, Oppie, Oppie Fox, good to see you back. And it's been a while, how are you? For anyone just joining us, we are in the midst of some continuation of an arena that you wise people in the chat decided to go and draft. And you know what? It's been working out good. Working out good. We are 3-1. And this deck pretty much has solid minions throughout the mana curve. So what we do is throw your minions down and kill things with them. And it's been good so far. Two hexes is very beneficial for an arena deck. We got some control. We got some nasty combos. I'm waiting to Ancestral Spirit and Sunwalker um, for maximum opponent tears. <laughs> it's not that we want to make people sad. It's just that we enjoy winning games of Hearthstone. Good, it's fun to win. But it's not everything if we lose. Ah, there we go. Happy birthday to Obby for last week. Um, right, um, I've got the obvious play. Well, we know he grabbed the Sunwalker, so um, with his mind vision, that is fine. We're kind of happy in ourselves. We know what's going on. I'm going to go for a bit of a totem science using the Dark Iron Dwarf, or did. I want a camera in a duck race. <laughs> I, I don't think you even need to explain that. That, that is just awesome, whatever the explanation is. <laughs> Best chat comment of the evening. As well as a duck, duck holding up a 10 out of 10 sign. Emoticon and Twitch chat. Brilliant. Back to the Hearthstone world. We've kind of taken board control here nicely. And that one mana healing totem that I was mocking. Even though we've been mind visioned again. There's going to be something nasty going on there. Oh yeah, any of that he's picked is nasty. But here's where the horrible play comes for. Go down the Sunwalker. We'll throw down an Ancestral Shield. And we'll be like, oh, Ancestral Spirit. You kill it, it comes back to life again. I oh, should have probably removed that um, Dark Scale Healer. Ah, rubber ducks down a river. Winning a camera from ducks now makes perfect sense. Oh, bring, welcome back. Powered shield. Buffs up, draws a card, and that Dark Skull Healer is now going to be starting to try and trade things with a bit of Taz Dingo. We've now got a few minions we need to bash through as well. And a bit of a heal. This game is not over yet. <laughs> Confusion abounds about rubber ducks in chat. Excellent. This is exactly the way things should be. The universe is in balance. Okay, so I can have a lethal quite happily here. Um, we used to do this. We can do this. And that will mean that we can bust through that. A very well played to you as well, sir. Oh, very enjoyable. Okay, so uh, we can pop that up. And we did a good Hulk smash job there. We've 
Golden Wind Fury, beautiful. Okay, guys, cross my heart out today. We are 4 1. 